Hey, what is up everybody? It is AJ here and in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing and of course checking out the Surface RT in 2022. The Surface RT was released 10 years ago and was the first hardware device from the Microsoft Surface lineup. It was around for about nine months before it was discontinued and replaced by, of course, the Surface 2 and the Surface Pro 2. I think looking back with the ability of hindsight, the Surface RT was actually ahead of its design with the foundation that this device is built on. In today's video, we're gonna check out that foundation and see if the RT is worth anything today in 2022. I picked this unit up off eBay for 75 Aussie dollars, which included the device itself, which is nicely packed, the keyboard, and a few accessories. Of course, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're on a supercharged way as your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, Let's get into this. For a computer that is 10 years old, it's actually, the packaging anyway, is in really good condition. It almost looks brand new out of the retail store. The device is just gonna slide out. You can see the old Microsoft Surface logo there. Ooh, we have our charging brick in the old original Surface Connect port. That charging brick, says Windows RT, is again in really good condition. I'm really impressed with uh, this so far. The device actually looks like it's been resealed really well. And of course, in here we still have the original warranty and manufacturing information from Microsoft, which I'm not sure if that was ever taken out of the box or not, but we're just gonna pop it in there for now. And then of course, here is our Surface RT. Now by today's standard, it is a very thick bezel, but in terms of the device itself being 10 years old, you can see along the side of the body here, it does have a few wear and tear marks, but it is overall in really decent condition. It's got its 1.2 megapixel camera at the back and of course at the front. And of course, once we turn around, we have the haptic feedback in the Windows logo, which is also at the start button. And it has the power button in the top right hand corner. And I've just noticed a big, dent taken out of the corner, top right hand corner here of the device. Um, and of course the Surface Connect on the right hand side with a USB A port and the kickstand at the back here that has I think two, one, one. Uh, really, one? Yeah, it's got only one, um, one position. Overall though, uh, it's in really good condition. It does look dated with those really thick bezels that it has. Um, the old Windows logo and of course that tiny camera at the top there. But I'm really impressed with the condition of the body itself. And then we do have the touch cover, which came with a few, they didn't have the packet for it, but it has a few accessories here. They've given us a surface power, car power adapter, but that's actually the wrong, it's not, that's the newer Surface Connect. You can see here that this is the car power adapter. That's not actually gonna work with this device, but it will work with the newer surfaces. And we have a few adapters. We have a VGA to micro USB and uh, a HDMI, which is probably a bit more relevant. And then of course, the touch pad, which is in really good condition. I do actually miss the fact when Microsoft first came out with the Surface, so I had really bright keyboards. Now they're a bit more subdued colors. The difference between the touch and the type cover is the touch cover is basically flat and it is a really thin de uh, design. Trackpad is tiny. It is basically the size of a thumb and a half. But this was a great concept in the fact that it would make it a much thinner and lighter way of typing on the keyboard. But because there's no physical keys here, there was a, no tactile feedback and it really didn't take off all that well. But the idea behind it, I think, was really, you can applaud them for changing the way or trying to change the way the keyboards were used. So we've got the RT plugged into power and then it turns straight on. Here is our Windows 8 login screen. And we're just gonna snap the touch cover in and it doesn't actually magnetize to the top so it does have to lay flat on the table the newer surface devices of course they do magnetize up like that and that allows you for a better typing position that keyboard is frustrating to use uh, it is quite snappy though in terms of it's not lagging everything turned on as soon as i put it into power and now it's just going to set itself up uh, i haven't seen this login screen for a while so let's customize it let's put in let's go for oh Right, let's go for a more subdued orange. Yeah, this keyboard, I can see why people are not a fan. It's really hard to type on this keyboard. It's just flat 
there's no tactile feedback and you don't even know if you're pressing the key or not. Typing on the keyboard has been terrible, just to be honest. Uh, looking at the device, it is only a HD screen, not full HD. It's 1366 by I think 768 resolution. So it's not the best screen. But one thing that really stands out is how thick these bezels are. It can only run apps on the Windows Store. The only Office applications it shipped with was Windows 10 Home, which gives you Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and of course OneNote. But you do need to sign in to really maximize the use of them because it wants to use the cloud powered storage because it only has 32 or 64 gigs. You can of course expand that with a micro USB, but this was one of the touch points of the device. Once you put the operating system on here, you don't really have much storage space for anything else. And of course, before it was called OneDrive, it was called uh, SkyDrive, your cloud storage. So we are gonna turn on the SkyDrive settings. Haven't heard that term in a long time. In terms of the setup process of the RT, it was really quick. I think it's been 15 minutes from when we first put in our details to actually have it up and running with the Windows 8 start menu. Um, of course, this is a error far and gone and mainly forgotten by Microsoft with your swiping in from the right hand side to bring up your start menu. That should take us to our different applications. Your left hand side here is gonna let you swipe through and scroll to different apps at a full screen. Swipe back into the right to go back to our start menu. Can go to our desktop, which is our traditional looking Windows start menu, which has been updated by um, Windows 11. And you can see down the bottom here, we have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and uh, Internet Explorer, which has also been discontinued since the time of the Surface RT. You do actually get, I remember you'd get two versions of Internet Explorer on this. You get the full app version here, which is what we're looking at right now. And then of course, if we went over to the desktop, you'd get Internet Explorer on the desktop. Hello. There we go. It does actually feel very nostalgic using this old operating system. Let's see what applications. So you can see here, it's actually really quite smooth. Do we have a Spotify app? We do not. Uh, let's see what else is in this store. Menu, if I press the start button here, that is actually a haptic feedback. So you, when you're pressing on it, it does vibrate and give you that little bit of feedback. But you can see we've actually signed in and you know, things are saving online. We can set it for touch or mouse input. Um, we can drop this down and bring our ribbon back up. We can pin it here. So I could use this as a little portable tablet um, to continue working. It says two authors are editing this document. Uh, of course, that's me, myself, and I, uh, because I've got this open on a few different devices. So I can conceivably use this as a device if I want to use it through the power of OneDrive or SkyDrive. I'm actually really impressed with this thing. Um, would I use it? Oh, you can see here, actually, if I fold it back, we have a tear in the type cover of the touchpad. Um, and of course, when the touchpad is flipped around, it is smart enough to know to turn itself off. Let's actually see what the camera is like. Where's our camera? Do you want to use location? Yeah, let's see. So uh, that is my living room. Uh, you can see our little penguins there. Whoop, I've taken a photo. Uh, we can, of course, do a panorama. Pretty fancy. I remember this. You can do a 3D panorama. This is actually really cool. Do they even have this feature on newer devices? I don't know. This will basically stitch together the entire 3D room. There's you guys on the camera watching us. That's good enough for now. And it's stitching our image together. I actually forgot about this feature. This was such a good feature um, where you could take 3D, I guess, photos and stuff like that. Um, can we go back to see your camera or drag the screen to the right? So I drag the screen to the right? No, if I drag it this way. Ah, oh, and that's right, you could snap, so you do a quick in and out, and it shows you all the things you have open on the left-hand side. Drag the screen, ah, oh, and you just swipe it that way, and you can see this, if we had more of a photo, this would let us look at it in a full 3D view. That is cool, I actually really miss that feature. It's not there on Windows 10 and Windows 11 cameras. That's, um, that's really cool. In terms of the picture quality, it is a 1.2 megapixel camera, so you're not gonna be taking amazing, amazing photos with it, but it is better than expected. And if we swap it around, I'm guessing it's this, nope, that's a photo. Can I change the settings here? Yeah, I swipe down, I go switch the camera. That is us, hello, pretty, it's not bad. It's, it's 
it's kind of clear, um, but we can take a video, a photo, or that panorama. Um, and of course, we can adjust the exposure and the timer down the bottom, or we can just take a photo and we're gonna swipe that way, and there's our picture. It's pretty grainy, but it's not bad for a 10 year old camera. What can I say? Then we press the start button to go back to our start menu. Again, I'm just really impressed with how snappy this thing is um, and the fact that it connects to my OneDrive and all the documents here and I can edit it if I wanted to. It's really cool. For this video, I really had no idea what I was gonna make for you guys. Um, I just wanted to turn around and see if A, it worked, and then B, see what we can do with it. Um, I guess what we can see is that with Internet Explorer, because Internet Explorer is actually an old and obsolete program, um, not everything's gonna load on there. You can see we have our task manager here. So we have the CPU, the, the quad core Tegra 3 chip, our two gigs, massive two gigs of RAM, um, and it doesn't show us our hard drive. But if we open up our, our Explorer here, we can see this PC and we have a full 20 gigs free on this 26 gig hard drive. So not a lot of storage there, but luckily we have our SkyDrive or OneDrive to still access our stuff. While the RT uh, continues its setup, I do just want to take you through a lot of the similarities between the newer Surface Pro X and Surface Pro 8. I mean, design-wise, they are very similar even though they are 10 years apart. They both still have that keyboard that simply removes and detaches from the bottom or the base of the device. It magnetically attaches and has that satisfying snap. Of course, the Pro does have things like the ability to add the keyboard up, does have a much better tactile feeling keyboard, and of course, it does hide the Surface Pen inside of here that allows you to mark and annotate and draw up. But the design cues are really quite similar. You have, of course, the trackpad on the Pro X and Pro 8 is a lot bigger and the keyboard is a lot more rigid. If you look at the screen here, you have a really big bezel on the RT, an extremely thin one on the Pro 8 and Pro X, but it's, again, very, very similar. They have the ports in very similar spaces. So on the right hand side, you have the original Surface Connect port that magnetizes in, which Microsoft has kept 10 years on with the Pro. They've moved it up to the top here, but you still have the same Surface Connect idea where it's magnetizing in instead of being a physical plug. The kickstand, this one here only has one angle and it's quite hard to use. The Pro X is much more free flowing it allows you to drop it down to basically any angle um, and it is a lot smoother to use. But you can still see here that all the design cues of the Pro, of the RT, have been made better over time on the Pro 8 and the newer Surface Pro devices. So when it comes to using the Surface RT in 2022, what are my thoughts? It is a obsolete operating system in Windows RT that won't let you download any new programs. And of course, the Internet Explorer on here is also obsolete. Um, it is running a original ARM processor that back in 2012 didn't have a lot of processing power. And by today's standards, even less. But for all that is actually quite snappy as the little operating system that is on here. I do actually like seeing the old Windows 8 Metro design on here. Um, and the fact that this connected up to my OneDrive or SkyDrive account, so I could pull in the programs that I was working on, so the documents that I was working on, they worked on here without a problem and saved back to the cloud. But this computer is 10 years old and it definitely does show its age. It has the big bezels on the side and it's got a terrible keyboard and a tiny trackpad. An obsolete operating system and the Internet Explorer on here is actually not even gonna work as you intended it to. So could I recommend the Surface RT to anybody wanting to do anything with it? No, uh, unless you're gonna use the Photos app as basically a carousel for some photos that you have um, and you just want them playing off your SD card or something like that. Um, aside from that, I can't actually see any tangible use of using the Surface RT. But what I can see is the fact that this device was released 10 years ago and was the first device from Microsoft using an ARM processor, using the iconic two-in-one design now, which is what they've continued to drive over the past 10 years in their Surface lineup. We can see Apple has actually made leaps and bounds using the ARM processors they've built in-house and Apple actually showing what this Surface Pro or this Surface RT was wanting to be and is really the basis for, and that is a desktop operating system on ARM. Of course, you have devices like the Surface Pro X that have taken the idea and the concept of the RT 
and made it into fully fledged and usable devices. And then you can also see what Apple are doing with the similar concept of ARM and desktop processing. So the RT here has been a great trip down memory lane. It's actually a snappy little device that I do, you know, things like the type cover, the panorama photos, um, the Metro operating system, the two desktops, is it in Metro? Is it using the full desktop? Um, those sorts of things I do kind of miss. I think the design language of this is definitely still seen in the, the devices, both from Apple and Microsoft today. And I really think the Surface RT was ahead of its time. It's not a device that I would choose or would recommend anybody to use in 2022, but looking back at it 10 years on, I'm really glad that we did this video. It's only cost me $75 and I've actually gotten a lot out of it. I hope you guys have too. Of course, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to supercharge the way you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well.